Most of you have probably heard about heartworm disease in dogs. It's a really common disease. I'm sure you've heard about it from your veterinarian. Um, and the sad thing is that the disease is 100% preventable, but it has been on the rise despite that. It was, years ago it was that heartworm was mostly in the south and the east of the United States. And now that incidence has actually kind of creeped across the United States to where it's all the way down to the west coast and across the middle parts of the states. Um, it's a very serious disease. It literally is a condition where you have worms in the heart. It's a type of a nematode worm similar to what dogs might get in their intestinal tract but this particular one is in the bloodstream. And when the mature worms are developed, they actually live in the heart. And by living there, they cause backup of the blood in the pulmonary artery and can also cause problems in the lungs. Um, so bottom line, like I said, it is a nematode parasite. Um, the way it's transmitted is by mosquitoes. And so it, the good news is it does not go directly from dog to dog but it does go from dog to mosquito to dog. So if you have positive dogs in an area and you have the mosquito population to support it, those mosquitoes will then bite another dog and transmit the disease. Um, we have a life cycle for you to look at. And uh, basically what happens with that life cycle is you have a dog with heartworm, okay? Then the mosquito bites that dog and picks up what are called microfilaria which are, quote, the baby heartworms that are in that dog's blood. Once the mosquito picks up the microfilaria, then it goes through a couple of larval changes in the mosquito until it becomes an infective larva. It's called an L3. Then what happens is that mosquito then bites another dog and injects that infective larvae. Once that happens, the, the immature worm migrates into the tissues of the dog and will eventually end up in the heart and become a mature adult. That entire life cycle takes about six months, so it does take time for those to, to develop to adult worms. Um, then, of course, once those adult worms are living in the circulatory system, they tend to live in the right side of the, side of the heart, um, in the pulmonary artery area, and they then become reproducing adults and they then form more of the microfilaria. And thus the cycle goes on where those microfilaria are then picked up by another mosquito. Um, heartworm disease can be carried by many species of mosquitoes. Um, part of the reason that it was not that common in certain parts of the United States years ago is because certain mosquitoes didn't live in those areas. But now more and more mosquitoes carry heartworm and so we're seeing it in more areas. Um, and what happens with today's mobile society is that people move from place to place. Um, things like Katrina happen where dogs are moved from one area of the country to other areas. And if those dogs are heartworm positive, then they bring heartworm to those areas. Um, so we've talked about transmission. As far as commonality, it's very common, like I said, which is sad because it is such an easily preventable disease. Um, there's an estimate that probably fewer than 50% of dogs that are owned are on heartworm preventive, which is pretty sad because it's, it's really pretty cheap insurance to put your dog on heartworm preventive. Um, so we've talked about what, how, why it's so common. As far as where is it, like I said, it's all across the country, but there are certain areas where it is definitely more, quote, endemic, and probably one of the worst areas is in the Mississippi River Delta um, and down around the southeast part of the United States. Um, if your dog was to develop heartworm, um, the symptoms are usually going to be coughing, and that's because you can get backup of some blood into the lungs and you have those worms in the pulmonary artery. Um, another thing is just exercise intolerance. So you could see that the dog is, maybe when it runs, it gets um, out of breath really quickly, has trouble breathing, coughs when it's, um, when it's exerted, that type of thing. Um, certainly any of those symptoms would prompt a visit to the veterinarian, but hopefully that won't be necessary if your pet's on preventive. Um, there are a number of forms of preventive. There are oral medications, and there are also topical medications that you put on your dog. Um, many of those medications will also prevent other parasites, such as intestinal parasites, fleas, ticks. So there are a number of um, products you can choose from and your veterinarian can help guide you on which ones to use. I do recommend that you do these through your veterinarian. They are prescription products, so it's not something that you should be able to buy over the counter or online.
Um, if your pet does get heartworm disease, there is a treatment that's very successful, um, but it is very expensive and it can have side effects in the pet. Um, bottom line is the veterinarian has to give injections and it's kind of a painful injection. It goes up in the muscles in the back. The dog usually has to be hospitalized for at least a day. And then they'll do one injection and then most of the times they repeat another injection either the next day or they come back in a month and get two injections at that time. And that's just to assure that they kill all of the heartworms that the dog might have. Um, you might ask about cats and heartworms do occur in cats. They're not a normal host for the heartworm. So sometimes they don't really get all the way to the heart. Um, so what we see in cats is that these juvenile worms will live in the blood and they will get into the vasculature of the lung and cause inflammation in the lung. And that can cause respiratory symptoms in cats, such as coughing, heavy breathing. Um, some people mistake it for feline asthma, which is, uh, as you know, probably humans get asthma. And so um, cats can get asthma secondary to heartworm disease. Um, another interesting fact is that humans get heartworm disease. Again, they're not a normal host for the worm, for the parasite, so it will sometimes cause other symptoms in adult humans and not necessarily develop the worms in the heart. Um, so I do recommend heartworm preventive for all dogs. Um, I said we consider it cheap insurance so that your dog stays healthy, so that you keep other dogs in the community healthy, and so that you don't have to put your dog through treatment for heartworm disease. Um, in cats, I also recommend that they be treated and uh, with the heartworm preventive, but there's actually not a treatment for cats once they get it. So it's important that you try to prevent it in your kitties. And uh, one thing I didn't mention, but as far as testing, um, there is a relatively easy test that can be done with a small amount of blood in your veterinarian's office. Oftentimes they'll recommend that on an annual basis. So I do recommend that you go ahead and let them test your pet for heartworm before starting it on preventive. Um, like I said, it's a really easy test and it's something that you should be looking to your veterinarian to help you with.